Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn, and you are here to learn what is Shortest Trip to Earth, and I have some answers. Shortest Trip to Earth is a roguelite uh, game about space travel and trying to get back home. It's been early access for quite a long time, it's finally out, and so I'm going to do a proper review of the game. I've been playing it a long time early access, the game's changed quite a bit. Final update though is out, or final of the build, so now it's um, out of its early access. Um, this game... Well, it's an interesting game. Uh, the company that um, made the game, or the developers anyways, are Interactive Fate. Uh, you can see their little .com down there. You can check out their website if you want to. And it is um, published by Iceberg Interactive, a company I am not 100% familiar with. But, they, I've heard the name before, and I've heard positive things about it. Right, anyways, Iceberg Games has published a lot of games, and I'm not really familiar about them. Just did a quick search on them. The wonders of editing. Anyways, so, very interesting game. It's a bit like uh, Faster Than Light. That's the comparison most people call it. However, it's a lot more in-depth, and I actually think a bit of a fairer game than... Um, Faster Than Life, FTL. Short Trip to Earth is actually, well, I haven't done the last bit, but as a progress throughout the game and the challenge, it is actually quite beatable if you know what you're doing. Um, now, there, some people have given this game some flack because they say there's too much micromanagement, and I have done that myself. But once you get used to it, the micromanagement actually goes away. It's definitely a harder game to like get used to the controls. However, the team worked really hard on that. And they're actually quite a bit nicer now than they were to start with, so it's really good the team. So, let's talk about this game's um, requirements. So, its minimum requirements are 4 gigabytes of RAM, i3, and an okay graphics card. So, it will run on your run-of-the-mill laptop. It recommends about 8 gigabytes and i5. Now, by now, in this present day, most people should have that in a computer worse than an i5, 8 gigabyte is a potato, and you shouldn't be playing video games on it anyways. Now, you're, what you're seeing is I have, I believe, an i7, or, yeah, I think I have an i7, possibly an i9, I'm not sure, I'd have to recheck my specs, I really should know them, and I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a very good graphics card, um, can't remember what it's called either, I'll have to look it up, but... So, very much over the top requirements for this game. And it runs smoothly, there is no lag, no problems with it. Okay, let's check out the settings. So, I'll put a link in the description below though, so you can skip ahead to whoever picks you want, as always. And let's give you some impressions of this game. So, in settings, we've got general, got music, effect, music volume, effect volume, UI volume. All of these already turned down low. WSD, sensitivity, kind of smoothing, Show crew outline, show helpful tips. Then controls. It's got a lot of hotkeys you can map to. I ignore most of them, but it is very nice to see all the hotkeys can be mapped. So there's a ton of different stuff you can map to here. I ignore that, mostly. And graphics. Graphics are quite simple. I've got resolution here. I've got full, um, full screen on though, so it doesn't matter as much. UI scaling. I've got the UI nice and big. Can control lighting, full size text. Um, gotta keep that on. Vertical V sync, anti aliasing, film grain, UI coloring, so you can mess around with all that stuff if you want to. So it's got a decent selection of options. You can't turn down the graphics. Well, besides resolution, which is a way to turn down graphics, but you can't really turn them down besides that. You can't go, ooh, pretty, ooh, less. But it's really a game that doesn't need that. It should just run. So we're, I had a run going, but we're going to retire. Are you sure? Overrated. Fate points will collect from the existing game. So I'm going to have no fate points, which is fine. So yes, let's start a new game. There's uh, several different modes. So we've got tutorial, which is a tutorial of the game. Challenging mode, when your ship runs out of HP, you start losing ship's maximum HP instead of simply dying. And we've got hardcore. So they actually changed because the hardcore used to be the game ends with the ship hits zero HP. Well, it used to be the game just didn't go in slow-mo, but it looks like they actually did something about it. And they're like doing a little joke here. Some people say, ooh, that's dumb. They only have challenging. They should have an easier mode. And that's just a fact about this game. It's hard. So yeah, click on challenging mode because that's what the game is. It's challenging. It's telling you what the game is. All right. 
Yes. Yes, and so expect to die a lot. The game's hard. Play the tutorial if you don't know what you're doing. Now, I had all the sectors explored. However, it would cause game instability for the final launch, so I got rid of it. And by getting rid of it, I unlocked every ship. Now, I had every ship unlocked except this one, which is a cool ship, but we're not going to play in that one today. We're going to play in the starting ship, the Tigerfish. Now, a feature I really do like is you can rename your ship, so we could have the SS Edwin if we wanted to. So, find name for a ship, and we can then continue on. So, it tells you a little bit about the ship. Um, I just deleted the name there, but so you can see here there's like weapon slots, mounted starting crew, hull points, evasion, all these stats, and a little description, which is nice, and a little art going on. So, we're going to go back to the Tigerfish though. S, S, um, I think there's a space now. Ed Win. Yeah, there we go. As I said, Win. All right, and we will continue on. And then you get your little crew selection screen. So, oh, the robots um, have actually been updated in their appearance. You get this little thing. You get your fate points and what you can spend stuff on, various different ship things. So, there's a bunch of ship upgrades. There's a whole bunch more, actually, than they started with. So, you've got tons and tons of things so like the basics are resources so you're like okay i want more fuel for this run so you can click on this and we're going to get a little bit more fuel we've got some extra fuel containers and it's like i want more exotics and bam instead of zero I have one exotics now and they're like okay maybe i want a uh, extra crew member so let's get the adventurer and now you can see him here um uh, wolf moon down there and we could get a scientist if we wanted to we can get these tactical upgrades, which should help our ship. Um, accuracy and evasion. We can get elastics augmentation, which give our ship more HP. Actually might do that. It regroups it, but some of these things reduce the amount of stuff you start with. So I have less than that, but I have more HP. I think that's worth it. And then I could get some deflection and some evasion for my ship. Then a little bit more of deflection and evasion, take away from my cracks, but all these nice little pass upgrades. Then there's permanent upgrades, so you can permanently upgrade your ship. I had a bunch of these beforehand, but it just makes this one ship you choose better each time you play. And you can get stronger, stronger if you do better. Then you could get some little fire safety drones if you want to, but we've got a nice little swarm of gunnery drones here and heavy duty industrial drone for repair. Maybe we want to fire putting out drones. So we've got some fire extinguishers. Then you can, while you're flying, you need like food on the go, right? So this game, you can select, ooh, let's get a little grow up going. So we'll get a little guardian module and you always want to put people in cryo sleep. So let's get ourselves a little cryo sleep chamber. And we've spent most of our fate points here. I was hoping to get a converter for fuel. Uh, maybe I should get the industrial laser upgrade instead. It's rather expensive, but I can like clip out of some point somewhere. So let's get rid of the two firebots. And I still need like one more point so we can get rid of that and let's get the upgrade to our lasers. All right, so we got nice upgrades and then you can go over to your crew and you can rename them. So we've got some, and it gives you little descriptions about each person, but you could rename your crew. So we could name um, this fine fellow here. This guy's going to be our captain. He's going to be Ed Win, Edwin for the win. And then we got our robots. We could rename them. Don't really feel like rename many people this time around. But, like, I like Wolf Moon, Little Josine. A lot of times the cats have other names, so, but it's usually Little, so we can rename a Little Death uh, Bringer of. Okay, there's a limited amount of text, but still, it's cool. You can, like, rename them and stuff and have all your lovely little friends. And now we're going to start. And it brings you into the little story of the game. Now I'm going to just turn up the volume so you can listen to the music and read this for yourself. Modules received for perks upgrade inside storage, open panel. Okay, so you get a little AI that tells you stuff you can do. And there's a bunch of hot keys for this game. You can look inside your ship, and we do that by tab. And here's our ship, the SS Edwin. All right. So it's a lovely little ship. It's got 
a bunch of guns on it. It's actually updated since I last played. It's actually really changed in appearance. It's got the two-tailed engine. You can see all inside your ship like um, FTL. And then you can have all your little crew friends here. So here's Wolf Moon. Here's a little gun bot. They're all actually pretty good at using guns. They have this gun skill of three. Appropriate for gun bots. We got our cat here. Someone's injured. And so Edwin, our captain, is injured in here. We got this double, double crew going here. These guys are both fiercely typing away, trying to keep our ship piloted and safe. We've got a guy with a little flak gun here right in the back, guarding our ship from getting shot in the rear. We've got a little trigger point turret up here too. And got a repair drone bay, got a warp engine. Let's check out our cargo. All right, we've got a little grove here we can install. And then two people can hang out here and grow stuff. So we got a lot of gun bots. So let's send one of them over to harm this thing. So it's now changed it. So one of the things you can notice about these guns is there's the little number, which is 15 seconds, and then the minus 20 seconds per skill point. And so these robots have three skill points, so, my, so it's minus 15% and the gun's more accurate because of the little robots. Now, some of my crew might be better shots than that, but none of them are. All of them have lower accuracy than that thing. Now, every crew member has different skills, so like this guy, he's kind of good at shooting guns, our Edwin friend. This guy, he's alright on communications. Now, these two fine fellows, I noticed right away, seem to have a knack for gardening. So we're going to send both of them over to the gardening station. We're going to move Wolf Moon here, our, our lovely mercenary friend. Even though he's not the greatest pilot, he doesn't give our ship the most evasion, we're going to move him here. And then we can get, we're producing food now, so we still consume food. So if you, if you look over here, oh my, this guy, this, this chump here, um, go to sleep. So if you look over here, there's the amount of food that your crew consumes, and then there's also the amount that they're producing. These guys are rather useless right now because this thing is powered on. So if we turn it on, if we turn it on, we don't have enough power to run it currently. So if we turn off one of our guns, boom, now we're getting positive food. If you run out of food, you start dying this game. Um, I, I'm playing this game like I'm trying to play it well and explain it at the same time. Let's give an overview of the ship. Okay, ship overview. So we got the engines like I said, and oops, you got a reactor. We'll get to that later. You got your guns. You got your missiles, you got your scanners, you got your little thing you, where your pilot is. You can open and close the door. You got some storage. You got some shields. Now, our crew is a nice little setup of being happily just sitting here and not doing much. Not getting up to much. Just, just relaxing, chilling out, you know? Not a care in the world. But then, what if disaster strikes? What if we need to fight? Well... Then we say, all right, uh, you guys, there's some danger going on. So, oh my, you're particularly good at shields. They're my friends, so you go over to the shields. And you there, you seem to be well-versed at navigating a ship. So why don't you go over there? And you in Crow Chamber, you're good with guns, aren't you? No, you are suck. You're a miserable excuse for manhandling weaponry. So why don't you go over here and take this over and... Why don't this little robot come over? And oh, there's a robot right there. Sorry. Why don't you go over here? And you miserable excuse for a gun handler, handle this thing. And then this guy in here, oh, he can wake up too. And we can say, why don't you go over here and handle this gun? And he's like, okay, I'll go handle that gun, sir. And he runs off over there and handle that gun. But it'd be annoying to do that every time. Very much, actually. Luckily, we can go, save all. And that's our guns. And they're like, all right, back to everyone, flight mode. And everyone runs off to appease me in my flight mode. And then it's like, everyone, weapons mode. Even in weapons mode, we could go, okay, let's power this thing on. So now everyone's in place in weapon modes. We save it again. Weapons turned on, right? Then we go, everyone back. Weapon turns off, weapon turns on. Weapon turns off, weapon turns on. It's very handy, lets you ignore the whole thing. It's a nice feature they added. added 
because the AI in this game was kind of terrible and would run about and be kind of useless at times, let's be honest. Now then, you got resources over here, you got your food, you got your fuel, you've got your metal, your ship's healing stuff, you got synthetics, random stuff that repairs all this garbage, and you got your exotic materials. This, this is good stuff. You got your credits, how you buy things, and you got your fate points. Now also you notice over here, you can just click this thing and, well, make people do stuff. So I could say, cat, because he's the only person available right now, go arm this thing. And my cat will pilot it for a bit until he wanders off or finds something to eat or sleep on. But we can actually make our cat pilot things. Then we can also have auto repair on or off. So there's a lot of various different buttons and we can unfreeze people and just send them about. And I'll take the person with the best skills to go to the best places, I believe. But now it's time to get traveling in this game. So to travel in this game, you simply hit Q on your keyboard or you can hit Sector. And you can see out here, but we're not traveling here yet. First, we're gonna hit Tab. This is our local star system that we're in. Furbum Dwarf Star. You can fly by your little ship, as you see, use up fuel, but also, since we're producing positive food, we get some food out of it, very slowly, but we're not using up food. Then we can land on this planet here, and it's a gas giant. It's ripe with fuel elements, unstable atmosphere. This planet frequently creates massive firestorms. So it's risky to harvest from. But we could get some good fuel out of it. So we try to harvest it and we get have an accident. So our ship gets damaged, we lose some metals and some specs, but we do get 84 fuel. And then we can repair that damage at a later date with someone assigned to repair. No one is assigned to repair. You there, or in this mode, turn into a repair bot. No, just your job is to repair, okay? There we go. Repair bot, activate! And then we can fly away from that giant. Oh, we've got a planet with an atmosphere. Frimbobex. Let's check it out. Lush forest and jungles. Let's explore it. Use up some fuel. And we see there's life here. And we can... Eco-harvest is easier because the local ecosystem is Earth-like. And our harvest technology does not need any adjustments. So we could kill these cute little things, but... You call eco-friendly, or we can just research as well. Let's leave it untouched. We don't need food. We're producing it in our lovely garden. So we get a little bit of a Xeno data, and we get some fate points because we're nice. So what a nice day. And then, oh, got another gas giant over here. We can check out Firm Bomb One. Hello, Firm Bomb One. A thin layer of harvestable fuel. So we're not going to get much, but um, there is a risk as well. So we're just going to check it out. And we just got fuel of the deal. Very nice. Now there's something over here. Firm Bomb for a lifeless planet. Ooh, I'd like if you could rename planets. That'd be a cool idea. Anyways, warning. This is a mining planet. So you can then go, ha, I don't care about your mining planet rules. And I've got ammunition over here, I forgot to mention. So I can print long range missiles and fire at the station. The swarm of missiles, a cheap printer of long range missiles flat. Uh, point blank defense, pick off some of the missiles before they reach the target. So I could just keep firing missiles because I have no use for guns. And boom, now we can use explosives, uh, exhaust mines. We could use energy cutters or explosives. I feel like energy cutters are more efficient. So we're going to cut up some energies. And look at that. Use up our fuel, we got metal and a ton of exotics. Lovely. We exactly cut through the security door and it seems mining has temporarily put a hold on, never resume. There seems to be a lot of exhaust though, so lucky us. And then this system has two stars. Whoa! Wait a minute. And there's another star over here. What's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's, what, what's going on? Why can't I see other systems? This this has never happened before. What, what's going on? Is this part of the update? Or is this this system down here? Can you actually fly to them now instead of warping? That'd be incredible. Zeros, yes, you can just fly to them. However, if you don't want to fly, if you're a lazy bum like me, you can hit tab, you can click on the destination and you can warp there. And zoom, uses up 50 fuel with your fuel with your warp drive. And we get into combat. Uh, uh, fleet approaches. Small fleet of ships with tractical weapons trained on us. They're ready to kill. Open up commands and it's filthy rat pirates. 
one of the main enemies of this game is the rats. There's always going to be little stories and stuff. They are going to try to say, oh, let's take this friendly donation of food. Or we can say, let's teach them a lesson. And we're not going to sell for any pirates. So we teach them a lesson. We're in combat. Their ship flies in. We hit the space button. Our shield is up. And we need to be in combat mode. So, everyone, to your stations. So everyone rushes off to battle stations. A lot of things are already in battle stations. This ship's got shields. We got shields. It's got health. We got health. It's got a lot of weapons. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we've got this gun here, which fires bolts of energy. So we got these two big upgraded guns we can start firing at. We want to hit that, these guns, I think, on them. General fire cover. And different guns have, like, different amount of damage radius. Ooh, industrial missile platforms. I actually needed my ammo. I didn't think I did. Haha. <laughs> All right. Well, we can fire some printed missiles at them. So we'll just fire those. And industrial lasers. So this little flat cannon is going to try to stop our missiles from hitting. But if we concentrate fire, we should be able to blast them. They've got a lot of guns, but so do we. So we get hit unpaused and it goes back into real time. We're going to seal this up so no one can break in. And look at there goes our guns smashing into their shields, dealing damage. They're firing at us. We're shooting our little countermeasures, our point blank guns at them. Let's enter slow mo. So as you can see here, ship already it's like firing the lasers, but this little gun here is firing at this flame projectile trying to kill it before it gets to us, before it explodes. And it's firing with everything it's worth, shooting a little beam and boom, it explodes before it reaches our ship. And then our lasers are hitting them here and we've cut through all their defenses so we can go back in real time. We're really hurting them now. Carving their ship up like a Christmas turkey. So we're just going to play haywire on their systems because we took out their point blade gun. We're just going to fire indiscriminately. All lasers full burst. And they still haven't hurt us. They hit our shields, but now, incoming here, are invaders. You can actually shoot at the invaders! Oh man, that's amazing. All right, fire weapons at the invaders. Um, I mean, I'm very unlikely to hit. And now they're attempting to escape, much like an FDL ship's attempt to escape. It's getting its warp drive ready. So, where is its warp drive hind? You can actually target those things with your ship, so you can go, I don't think so. Not today, suckers. We can target all the way over here. But we've got incoming invaders. We killed one before it got to us. The other one, he's making his way aboard. Let's unlock. All right, and our little robot is zapping him. And it is shooting a spray of lasers at him and electricity. We blew up their ship. Wasn't even paying attention because there's a little fight going on inside the ship. So much excitement in this game. And our little robot. It's doing its absolute best to kill him. And it fires its little spasmodic laser. And it zaps him to death. We got rid of that rat. And, ooh, look at this. We picked up a little bit of scrap from the bell. We did take one down to our ship. But all in all, it's pretty good. So let us store all in clothes. So we got ourselves a nice little scanner. Now we can compare it against our other scanner, which we got here. Let's see. So this scanner is 500... No stealth detection, either of them. Yeah, ours is just better. So we still, we can hold on to the scanner if we want to, or we could scrap it into material. So we can click on this thing, that's in storage, and hit scrap. It'll give us metal, synthetics, and exotics. Are you sure? Yes, so we scrap it and we get resources out of it instead. Then we unlock the doors and go, all right, everyone, back to your positions of friendly flying Fribble to LT. And then we can proceed on, although this sector is rather violent looking. So we could just fly around all that, take a nice long detour through space, and fly all the way over here to this nice little gas giant. There's a station here. Ooh, an unknown object. We can pick that up. Hello. Ooh, let's open up. Old Earth Design. Contains mundane material. And we got a module. We've got a metals pack, so we're just going to store that and we can open up later, or right now, and we can say scrap, and it gives us a hundred metal. I wouldn't recommend doing that though, it's a terrible idea. So this game, that's one part of it. Another part, let's warp on over here. There's a fleet and stuff. Approach. Hello! Smugglers, so they want us to buy or sell stuff. So we can say, let's sell some some exotics, and then they give us a little gift with that, and we get Oh, they're dishonest traders, though, so we get food and one of Xeno data, which sucks. 
So we can't attack the cheaters because they're jerks. And they have an absolutely massive ship covered in weapons. So sometimes it's not the best thing to be righteous and indignant. So we're going to load our guns up and we're going to fire at these scum of the cheater in scumbags. Now our, our missile platform might be at risk here because they got these flat guns up. However, if we actually, they don't have many people on board. So if we focus everything at just these two people here, we can take down a lot of stuff. So there are little shots, a lot are dinking off and deflecting off our ship. We did take some damage with our shield piercing. We took out a gun with our missile platform. Their shield still holds, and not for long. And one laser burst later, and boom. And our missiles make it in, dealing a nice amount of damage. Their shields have overloaded, so we can now go, let's just keep pounding these shields. And they've got some little shield charges over here, so we can fire at those. And then we can go, let's fire at their energy reactors. And we can take those down back here if we want to try. And then we can go, let's fire at just this area in general with the guns. And so they're running about repairing, shooting desperately. They have no invaders. And they're shooting all their guns, and then boom, our lasers hit. Ooh, that's a rupture in their food containers. They're not eating again anytime soon. And then our missiles fly out, and boom, we hit one of their cooled ion reactors. One of their shield boosters is going, not going down, they took damage. And fire slowly damages ships, fire is very dangerous. Two more missiles fly in and crash right in there, and their whole ship blows up in a glorious explosion and conflagration. And we got some resources though. We get loot. And we get a module. We got ourselves a multi-container. So we're just going to store all and close. And now we have excess. So we have too much metal. So we could craft a pack out of it. That uses up fuel to craft. But now we got a pack in there. Which is an absolute waste of metal. Although it is unfortunate. It is 100 metal. Okay, that's nice. I like that. Almost full and full. Yes, we have a lot of things. And you can upgrade places. Which is rather exciting. So, if we um, just select slot, we can upgrade this slot. And then, if we get enough exotics again, we need 10 exotics and a huge amount of metal. So we need even more spellage. We can actually make it into a hybrid slot, which we can load guns into. So right now, it just gives our ship an extra HP, so integral core mod. But if we upgrade again, we could actually equip a weapon right here, which is really cool. So you can like change your ship and morph it, so it can equip more weapons in more places. And of course, there is power management in this game. You might have noticed I have generators over here and here. I forgot to mention that. And so yeah, it's just like it's a space flying game of exploration and high danger and bravery. And your ship just trying to get home. All right. Now this is quite far, but we're going to fly it anyways. Oh, we got excess, so we're going to dump the excess, and we're going to fly all the way over here. So, it's a long flight, however, I think it's worthwhile if we're using up the food, although look at our fuel drop. It's dangerous flying throughout the void of space. But there's a lovely little trader over here, and in every sector, once we get here, so there's like a green guy coming along, he's going to go, hello, let's trade, buddy, I'm organics trader. And we can sell exotics to him. He gives us money for it this time. He's actually nice. We have too much metal though, so we're going to craft pack. And then we can fly over here. And ooh, look, here's the use modules and repair docking. So we can go, uh, hush, AI. You can then mark all damage and it'll go, okay, that's going to cost us 150 credits. And we got 100, we got more than enough. So we say repair, goes, repairs everything. Nice and tidy, and then we can do some trading with them. So they're like, we don't need, we need so many exotics, or we don't need so many synthetics, we can go, let's sell them, we get credits for it. And I was like, let's buy some explosives. And we can buy those, and then let's buy some exotics. And we could buy it, so we have 10 and we have no money left. No, I don't want to learn more about exotics, hush. And then you can buy crew, so here they're selling a little robot here. Little robot friend, and we can buy more guns, a shroomery, more things to replace our modules with. It's all really cool and exciting. Various different bits and bobs to grab and look at. Ooh, more shields. Now we don't have enough room, but we, and we don't have enough money, but that can be quickly things. See, 
we have a lot, a, a ton of organics that we can keep producing. So we sell organics, it's a strategy to go for. And like, oh, he sold his organics, the fool. And then we can go, let's buy ourselves a shield. And we bought ourselves some new shields. And then it's like, what are you doing, you madman? Why are you buying more shields? You already got one shield generator. Well, turns out that doesn't matter, because you can just replace. And boom, bada bing, we got a new one. You there, repair it. <coughs> and we can then buy some star fuel as well. And it doesn't have enough power to run, unfortunately. Oh, we're in full weapons mode right now. So, it doesn't, our shield module unfortunately doesn't have enough power to run. Even if we shut that down. So, we can go, all right, missile platform, we can turn you off, no, that's not effective. So you can go over here, any power generators for sale. 120 credits for a power generator. It does produce 12 power, which is a little bit more than that. So we think to ourselves, how can we afford this thing? Well, let's do some management. So we can, no, not star fuel, confirm, but we can sell even more food. So that's a good price. And we could sell some explosives. We could sell some of this metal. We got that package over there, right? And then I was like, okay, yep, we've sold the metal. And check it out. We've got enough for this generator, so we can buy that. And place this thing here. You there, over there. And he'll go, okay, I'll repair it, boss. And he, of course, he goes and repairs it. All these doors are closable too, which is kind of fun. We can go close. And lock them and stuff. And we got it running. It's still not enough power, though. Uh, God, that's a problem. We don't have enough power. Uh, we're never going to have this much fuel though, right? So we can go, let's re replace that there. And boom, we have enough power. Although we have terrible fuel economy, but we have plenty of power. And then we can go, everyone, back to sleeping positions. And so they'll all charge back to sleeping positions, which is lovely. And then we can go to the local warp gate. However, in every sector, at the end, there is this local warp gate. And there is always a fight or event at these areas. So you can prepare and get ready and explore and gather all the resources for the boss battle. Now once you're finally there, you can plan what you're going to do. You can send your, their crew to the respectable places beforehand because you know a battle's coming. So you can send them off and go, oh, okay, you guys get there and you get there and you'll go there. Um, now we can look about our crew and go to ourselves, huh, are any of these guys really, really good at shields? And this guy who's good at evasion is probably going to stay piloting here. And this guy, though, he's kind of good at that, but we could send him over here. And then, look at this. He makes these shields charge slightly faster. And isn't that something good and grand? And so now, our shields will actually recharge faster with each one of these guys per shield module. And so our ship has redundant shields, and it recharges faster, which is very nice. And then we go, okay, I'm ready. And we click on the warp gate. And we don't want to go through the local warp gate. Well, I'll go back fast. Yes, that was the wrong thing. Flying to the gate. Right, we go to the exit gate. Here. We go, hello, exit gate. Over there, let's just talk about that briefly. That is, uh, leave now. Prepare for the night fight properly. We've got some warp life coming. So, random vent, warp eels, they just sing to us, they're very nice. And then we go back here again. And we could pay to get through. Some of them you can't pay, but this one we can pay. So we could try to bribe our way through, or pay the tax with credits. Or you could say, your rules inspire me to question them. Prepare for battle. And then this giant doom ship comes in. You're like, oh no, it's a giant doom ship. And you can look at them. And they've got a science lab going on here and a bunch of little flat guns and various other bits of bobs. And they've got, zoom out and you can look at the top of their ship you can see all their guns on top. So they've got like two kind of scary guns. They've got themselves a little missile platform. They got themselves a laser shooter. And that's about it though. However, they also love invading. We can fire our lasers at them. Fire everything we have. In fact, we can fire our missiles. And we got these friendly little nukes here. And these friendly little nukes, we can go, all right, friendly little nukes. Get ready to fire! And once they fire, there's no going back. So we've lost those nukes forever. However, they're going to go off. Ooh, look at all these little gardeners here. We should nuke that. I mean, just fire a missile platform right over there. Take out all those guys. And then 
Our little missiles come in and boom, boom, devastating damage to the main core of the ship. They just ignore everything. Really loads of damage. And then we're firing at them and they're all spooked and stuff because see, they were planning to invade me originally. But since I dealt so much damage to their ship, they're like, run away. You have to repair the ship. And their missiles hit us and we're taking damage and there's little bits and things getting hurt here. He's repairing this. Like, oh dear, that better get repaired fast. Oh no, we're going to get hit by a lot of missiles. We've taken damage. We're on fire. That is not good. Put out the fire pronto. But they are not doing so hot either. Even though we've just been blasting them, that missile platform is going to do a number on us. So we best target it. Let's hopefully cut through with our lasers. Yes, we received critical damage. Shut up. And now our platform's back up again. And I can shoot and stop some of them. But bam, one of our guns goes down. We're working on repairing desperately here. Now they're sending an invader over. Some rats are finally ready to get us. But we're not going to have any of that. We're going to take out that missile platform. It's the main threat to our ship. Sometimes though, shots go wide. This missile looks like it might miss us. Nope, it hit us in the fuel tank. And many of our systems are on fire or on end or damage. We're leaking all over the place. And we've got invaders aboard. So our little robot's getting ready to fight them. We can just slam this door closed. And now they have to work their way through it. And we can have Edwin stand at the ready, ready to fight. Our little robot's there for fighting them too. He's shooting. Another little gun bot's coming along. They're all fighting. It's all a bit of a mess. It's dead. We got a terrible line of fire. Other robot died there. Everything's going lovely. Edwin is actually doing a pretty good job killing them. Our little gun robots are charging in, trying to help, but they've just got this corridor advantage here, which is actually kind of horrible. So these robots are just trying to freeze them out. And look at their ship. Ooh, they're hurting. The final lasers deflect. They've got one HP left. The shot fires. And they detonate. A grand explosion. Our crew are dead. Their crew are dead. We salvaged some stuff. We got some optics. <coughs> and modules we're hurting everything's on fire we got ourselves a little flat gun here we can throw into storage um yes let's get out of here and we've warped to the next sector and when we warp to the next sector you get unlocked so we got some new rat mercenaries there's sometimes more sometimes less there's 10 hidden perks Ooh, in that sector and we go through the warp gate, and there's a little story here now. And it plays along, you're flying. And, or no story, it's just a little thing. And we're in a new sector. And then we're gonna get informed by her that the great in between is sector unclaimed. Many pirates and stuff here, I got it. Or she can tell you stuff. But let's stop with it there. We're still draining and stuff. Yeah, your ships really do need to be repaired. You there. Repair. Actually, yeah, there's some more stuff. So then after all that, you level up your folks. So I can make my cat better at running the warp engine, for example. Robots don't level up. Crew do, though. Then I can say, hey, you there. Become a better pilot. And then I could say, hey, you there. Become better at shields. And I could say to him, hey, buddy, why don't you get better shields as well? And then he's going to work on repairing this. I could say, hey, you there, buddy. Get better at repairing. Don't suck so much at it. And he'll get better at repairing. And then I can say, everyone, um, back to your civilian positions. Everyone goes back to their civilian positions and this robot's going, nah, I have to repair this. And then these guys are going to sleep. And this guy in here is like, hey buddy, why don't you become better at, I don't know, Gardening, and then we can upgrade his gardening, and then we could replace him. But these guys are already better gardeners, and I should have upgraded them in gardening, because then we could get more food. But still, you can upgrade people, and it's really cool. It's like something new added recently, but it's just so many cool things, and there's so many crafts and various other bits and bobs in this game. It's a lot of fun. Actually, I really enjoy it. So, let's talk about my opinion about this game, though. Um, we'll just leave it here, turn down the music. So, <clears throat> it's a final thoughts on the game, or not final thoughts, but uh, review time. It's a fairly good game. 
It may take a while to learn, and you may get very frustrated at times with the random events, but you just have to read text and learn what to expect, and sometimes stuff happens in the universe. Um, sometimes the random events can suck a lot, but they've done and changed the game, so they don't suck as much. Expect to lose quite a few times until you get used to the game. It's one of those games. It's a hard roguelike game. If you're into that sort of game, then this is probably the game for you in some ways. If I mean, if that's your main criteria, you need more criteria for game. But that's part of this game. If you don't like losing a lot and never having any like true impact, this game is a pass for you. You do slowly unlock fate and accumulate more each time, so your ship can be better and better each time you play. But and you unlock new ships and stuff. I have them unlocked, but. Be careful about that, um, because if you really just hate dying over and over again and you find challenging games aren't your style, don't play this game. It's a fun space romp. It feels it's its own universe, you can learn the lore of it, and it's a cool world, so story-wise it's pretty neat. I've played through so many times I ignore the story a lot of time now, but there's still a lot of story, and you can make your own story. It's that evolving, emerging story. So we got like little Deathbringer here, survived that whole debacle. And We've got, um, none of them showed up, but sometimes when your crew die, you have little eulogies that happen for them. So you got like a little Deathbringer over there, and if we scroll along, um, where is he? Where is our friend? Uh, Edwin here. So, Edwin, there's a guy who constantly would comment on my videos named Edwin, and so I usually name a ship or a person after him in any video game I play where you can do that. The module management of the ship is pretty neat. There's like tons of different things always pay attention. So it's a resource management game. And it's a well done one. If you want like a good point reference for a game, think FTL, but then go, let's amp everything up and add a survival aspect to the game where you need fuel, you need constantly concern about your ship's damage and repairing it and things leaking. You need to repair your modules and your ship as well. You can't just repair them with scrap. There's no universal thing. You need to keep care of your ammo all the time. You need to keep track of your power. As you saw with these things, you can run out of power quite easily. And you need to keep track of your exotic materials, which have plenty of uses for trade and certain equipment. And you need to keep track of your credits so you can actually buy stuff. There's also research in this game, which is you can start researching stuff as you go along and you get a research bonus from your people. And there's little science labs sometimes, and you can go, oh, I produce science. And you're like, oh, I produce food. So you can like manage things, it's really cool. You can like build up really big ships. One of my favorite playthroughs in this game was if I um, retire and start anew here. So we'll just leave that ship and go back to challenging, start game. Uh, we're in the great between. One of my favorite ships in this game is the pumpkin hammer. And why I like the Pumpkin Hammer so much, yes, we're just going to ignore all that, lose all those fate points. Why I like the Pumpkin Hammer is this a giant food ship. So it's got a ton of storage in it, and it just has a bunch of gardens as well, and it produces a ton of food. And so you can basically play it by flying about with all your people working on the food and constantly just selling food everywhere. It's like a really cool concept because you've got all this food storage. And you go, all right, everyone, let's just lay it out. Also, the layout of the ship has actually changed. They changed it. So, like, it's very appropriate here now. It's it's actually like a cargo ship, but has the ability to grow food in it. So it's, it's very cool ship design. So they actually put a lot of work and thought into these ships. Another ship, if we want to quit that one, which I, I really enjoyed playing, was, um, and it's just another cool design. So you got, like, all your classic ships, got like this, ooh, this tech ship or something, or some sort of like gunship. This is the exploration ship. This is like some weird ship. And then you got this giant doom ship, an ancient ship for fighting. And then you got this organic living ship. And so you can go, all right, let's start here with this thing. And you look inside it and it's completely different than any other ship and it's got like um, these guns that are based on firing food and you got all these crew members hidden away inside and you got like these weird organic stuffs and it's just like each thing has its own story and own different little lore which makes the game really charming and really unique and you can like choose which one then you can build up stories about each ship that you play and so it's the immersive storytelling 
is quite cool in this game, or very neat anyways. And then there's of course the warp shell ship, which I fell in absolute love with. Because remember those exhausts I was talking about? Well, if we look inside this ship, it's got exotic guns. So I was like, you know what would be really cool is, I was like talking about this, is a ship that has an exhaust gun. So it's an absolutely overpowered weapon, but fires the most expensive consumable material in the game. And they added it. Probably not because of me. Probably they have the same idea because great minds think alike. But it was just like, oh man, an exotic gun. That's so cool. And then your ship, you can like look at the outside of it quickly here. Um, where is it? No. No. One of these buttons. One of these buttons will do it. Yeah, so you can look at the exterior of your ship and it's like, oh, it's a giant weird clam thing. But yeah, the storytelling is really nice and I love the artwork of this game. I love the little pawns running about. I love the look of the ships. I've already said that. Like, they look so cool. Um, it's all really neat looking. The art, the little artwork, like the spaceships your guys are wearing. These spacesuits are absolutely absurd. They're like these weird giant cubey things which are absolutely adorable and it's just it's neat like there's tons of different ships designs some different crew this is the science vessel science special if we look inside it it's got like a bunch of guns and stuff and a bunch of crew it's like its own design again its own layout it's like oh this could be like uh, whatever its backstory is but it's like this could be this kind of ship in design and there's invading pirates, different races that you fight as you try to get back to Earth, because you are mostly humans. And it's it's very nice design-wise. It can get frustrating at times when you get tons of random bad events, although you can try and mitigate those by never ever using this SOS button, which will attract things to your ship, which will usually try to kill you. So it's like a risk to turn it on. It's usually you use it when you run out of fuel. Here, see? Aggressive ships come in. Um... And so we can fight them, and it's a rather scary fleet, and there's like, you can recognize these ships though, it's like, okay, this ship, I know it's like style here, their little platform here for their person staying, and then all their guns are over here, and then it's like, okay, and this is just a classic rat ship, it actually looks like a little rat, here's all the little rat men inside, they use their ratty tech, and it's like, okay, yep, that's kind of cool, it's an enjoyable thing to do, like looking at all the story and different symbols on it. But yeah, the SOS, if you get a bunch of those in a row, like a bunch of bad events in a row and no good events, it can suck. Um, this game is tedious and it will take up a lot of your time though. Be aware of that. And sometimes things just go wrong and it sucks. Um, I haven't had any problems with stability. It's a really good game. I'm trying to think of some cons to it. Um, maybe more options in the option menu for graphics so you can minimize it, but they already have like the changing things and you should have a good enough computer to run it, like you should be playing on a potato. But if you don't have a good enough computer, then that's a shame and you can try messing with the resolution. Um, yeah, it's like, it, one fault of the game is you have to play it a lot. So to actually know how to play the game well, you have to actually get used to it. It's not a game you can jump in and do well immediately, like there's hidden information that you have to just figure out over time. And also you don't get all the ships right away. You have to unlock them by beating the sectors over and over again. Which if you really want like that new cool ship. You're know, like oh I just can't beat that sector. It might suck. But it's. So that's another problem. So you have to unlock stuff slowly. And there's hidden things you have to find throughout the sector. So you have to do a lot of exploring. And that can be tedious too. So if you're not into tedious long form gameplay. Which you can just lose everything at in a snap. And it's just like everything's gone, this isn't a game for you. But if you're like, okay, I'll throw like five hours at this run and oh, I got pretty far and I unlocked some stuff and now next time I can do some more stuff, then it might be the game for you if you're investing in it. It's like a, I don't know, it's like playing faster than life, but actually slightly more satisfying than FTL I find because one, the boss battles at the end of the game aren't absolutely absurd bullshittery like in each sector, they're actually doable, the boss fights. You're not getting chased by some force which is limiting your time. The only thing that limits your time is your few food and fuel that you have in your ship. And you can explore in sectors at your own free will. It just might be dangerous. There might be pirates out there. Or warp lives, giant aliens in space. There's plenty of story to read, but you don't have to read it. However, I recommend reading it because sometimes it lets you know what's going on. 
and I've ignored it sometimes and paid for that. But overall, it's a very good game in my opinion. I like it quite a bit. And it is cheap. Compared to all these AAA games that cost $60, $80, this game costs $23. Which is really good for the amount of play time I've gotten out of it. And I can pl I will play this game more. It's a fun game. And you can play it for a while. And maybe if they get mod support for it eventually, it could be even more playable. I don't know if they'll ever do that. But still, even without mod support, there's so much to explore in this game. And there's so much to do in it, like leveling up and trying different runs. It has a lot of replayability. And one of its features is replayability because each run is a replay. But with different people, new crew, different stuff. And you can try like, oh, I got killed by the rats in this sector. I hate those damn dirty rats. Or you're like... Yeah, I like rats. I always bribe the rats. Get past them. Who wants to hurt the rats? And you can like build your own story and your own opinions of the game and lore. It's, it's very engaging that way. I like it a lot. It, like I said, it has its faults, but final opinion of this game, I would recommend it. It's a fun tactical game. It is slow paced at times. It can be brutal. There can be mischance, but that's all part of the game. It's like the bad points are good points for me. I can see them being bad points for other people. It's got beautiful art. The music could be worked on a bit. Let's, the music could be worked on. Like, there's no battle music. Like at all. Or it's very faint. It's sort of like, nah, dur, dur, battle music. It's not that loud. I feel like there could be more music options, but they might not have a composer. And then they're in space is okay, I guess. Um, let's warp out of here. You can actually flee combat as well, so we're going to try to warp out of this. Try not to die. But yeah, it's still, it's a nice game. Could do with more music. There's some very fun parts of it. You can just keep upgrading your ship and exploring the universe and figuring out how the whole thing works. Yeah, we warped out of there anyways from that combat because we're dying. But yeah, it's, it's a cool game. And I would recommend it. It's, it's exceedingly cheap. It probably will go on sale every once in a while. And it's a lot of fun if you want like a strategy space romp that feels like FDL but a little bit different, a little more survival involved, a little bit more choice making. I think this is the game for you. If you don't like that kind of game, if you don't like strategy little pawn things, you can avoid this game. Because you're not missing out on anything. But yeah, I personally would recommend it to anyone who likes strategy games, anyone who liked FDL. It's got really fun lore, it's got some fun art, fun effects, even if it is like the pixely, it's like got a nice style to it. A lot of unique ships, a lot of unique stuff, and it's got good strategy, and it's a, it's a fun learning curve, it's fun to learn this game. So, that's my final take. I, I recommend it if you like strategy games, and you like roguelikes, and you like a space romp. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.